So what is strategic thinking? It's a buzz phrase. There is no definition of uh, what strategic thinking is. Strategic thinking is, I like to say, it's like a collage. It, it's, it's a group of, of um, different thinking skills and actions that you can take that collectively, when you put it all together, you, you get the necessary foresight on where you want to go with, with your organization. So to try to help you get some clarity, I created a eight-step framework of strategic thinking. And what I'm going to do is walk you through that right now. So we'll put up the first slide. Now you'll see there's uh, eight sectors here. One is open mindset, get information, connect the dots, create ideas, engage intuition, see the whole, perform analysis, make decisions. OK, let's go through each of these. OK, this is a prerequisite. If you can't have an open mind, if you don't realize you don't, you don't know everything, if you don't have a flexible mindset, if you're not open to ideas coming from right field or left field, you have better forget being a strategic thinker. This is a prerequisite. You must be open-minded, and you must be able to switch from, to different thinking. Now, you will get a copy of these slides you know, following the, the lecture, OK? So the first thing you want to do is, is, OK, I'm ready to start scanning the environment. You're, you're ready to connect the dots, OK? Well, now wait, without turning around, is there a picture on the back wall back there? My question is to you, do you care? Of course not. You don't care. The point I'm trying to get across here is, is that's how your mind works. It creates a blind spot. It, it creates a, a scotoma. Uh, what it does is it prevents you. If you saw and took in all the information around here, your mind would be so overloaded you couldn't, there's no way you could think. So the mind blocks out things that you're not interested in. So this raises the question about focus and how, to, how it's important that you have focus. And, and that's why the mind works that way, is that you've got to have focus. OK, so you're going to scan the environment. Um, now let me ask you a question. How many of you have seen the video of you know, people with white shirts and black shirts passing the basketball to each other? Can I see a show of hands? Quite a number of you. Well, guess what? You're going to see it again. But, but what I want you to do, even if you've seen it before and know what the answer is, I still want you to do it. Because you won't really get the learning value out of it if you don't actually do it. OK? So let's, let's run the video. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Make sure you count. No! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? Go! The point I'm trying to make in this video is that your focus on counting, your mind tries to create a blind spot so that that's, you can focus. Point I, I want to make across here is that when you're scanning the environment, your biases and everything else can create those blind spots if you're focusing in a certain way that you won't see those cues that are out in the environment that may truly affect your organization either positive or negatively. So it also could mean that you won't see the gorillas run around in your organization either. So point is, you have to be alert on being able to scan everything and not get trapped. So how do, 
one of the best things, the best approaches for dealing with all this is the strength of your mental models and frames of reference. This is how you see the world. This is how you make sense of the world. It's based on your experiences and so forth. <coughs> it's your perceptions. Your belief system is involved. Your biases are involved. But this is how you make sense of the world and you make judgments. This is how you connect the dots, though. This is how you make sense of what you're seeing. This is an important attribute that you're going to want to grow while you're here. The, a mental model is simply how, how you approach something. Uh, it, it, and you don't even think about the mental model. It's just in there. It's how you solve a particular problem. The issue is, is that if you try to connect three dots that work for you at the operational level, those three dots at the senior level may get you to something totally different than what the real problem is. You've got to expand your mental models and your frames of reference so that you can get five or six dots so that you can actually try to deal with what's really going on in the external environment. Okay? Again, this is why you're here is because th through your classes, through your discussions with each other, you're going to expand that. Create ideas. Okay, many of you have been in brainstorming sessions. Some of you have, are used to doing mind mapping. Uh, but this is where you're opening it, your creative thinking process. And what you're trying to do is create ideas without judgment. Okay, here's a school bus. Which way is the school bus going? You don't, don't shout it out. Just which way is the school bus going? Now. The preschoolers all answered this in 15 seconds. I'd be willing to bet some of you haven't got the answer yet. The answer is it's going that way. Question is, why is it going that way? You can't see the door to the bus. Now, of course, if you're from Japan or from England, it'll be going the other way because you drive on the left side of the street. Point is, why do we including me when I first did this, had difficulty figuring this out like that. That's because our creativity gets squashed as you go through school. It also gets squashed because of criticism and expectations of others. What I'm recommending is you go, go back to your childlike way of dealing with creativity when you were a child. Let me give you an example. My, I think my son was about a year and a half old. And he kept getting in the cookie jar. So my wife and I, what we did is uh, above the counter in the kitchen, we put it up on a shelf. And we had a little table and a chair in the kitchen. And one day, I saw my son go over. He pushed that table up against the counter. He pushed that chair up next to the table. He climbed on the chair. He climbed on the counter. I mean, on the table. Then he climbed on the counter, and he got the cookie. You know one thing he didn't do? He said, do I look stupid doing this? Will I make it? Those are adult reactions. What I'm suggesting is everybody is creative. It's like a muscle. The more you use it, the better you're going to be at it. So make a point of constantly trying to come up with ideas and, and spring off of them. Reframing. What do I mean by reframing is, is that you look at a problem and you look at it from a different perspective. Ted Leonis, he's the owner of the uh, Washington Wizards and the uh, Washington Capitals hockey team, gave me this example. There was a village in Africa where the number of young children were dying. I mean, only about 90% of the kids were dying. And they sent, spent millions of dollars, sent in doctors and researchers trying to figure out why were these kids dying. Was it because of the parasites? Was it because of mosquitoes and so forth? They couldn't figure out why this was happening. Finally, one of the researchers says, well, let's reframe it. Why are the 10% living? And they found out that these kids all came from poor mothers, and they ate 
five small meals a day with a little bit of fish in it. Everybody else in the village would eat once a day at a communal place, and only adults had fish. So they trained, they took the, these poor mothers, and they used them to train the rest of the village, and within two years, the death rate dropped by 80%. So that's what I mean by reframing the problem. Engage intuition. First of all, I want you to understand that as a senior leader, Intuition is going to be your final answer. Now, they rely on informed intuition and their gut. Because remember, you're dealing with things with no known solutions in most cases. Peter Schultz, he's the chief operating officer at TSAT at Spacecom, made this comment that you always do the uh, logical stuff first, but then you always, your final decision is always going to be based on your gut. Former chairman of Joint Chiefs told me, General Myers told me, almost all your decisions are through informed intuition. I stress the word informed. It's got to be informed. So it's a collection of all the experiences and so forth that you've had throughout your career and your life are rolled into that. Now, let me go through actually three distinct types of intuition. First, social intuition. Social intuition you use every day. For example, you've used it on each other when you first met each other. Do you like this person? I don't like this person. You, know, uh, you, you make judgments and so forth. It's a snap judgment. Uh, that's what I mean by social intuition. Expert intuition means that you're, you have a certain expertise. For example, a firefighter has certain expertise, and they have an intuition that if they open this door that it may have a back blast or something. Or if you're in combat, you say, geez, if I go around this way, I have this intuition. That's based upon a certain expertise. But this is where you really get in the problems if you use expert intuition on something that you're not an expert at. Uh, but that really causes you problems. Now, the third. I call inventive intuition. And the reason I call it this is because this particular intuition is coming up with something new. This is your ahas. This is your flash of brilliance. Now, what's, what's the difference in handling these? The first two are instantaneous. And, and what's important about them to recognize is they, they affect your behavior. They affect your judgment. And this is how you get hunches about doing something. But there's, you don't think about it. It's instantaneous. No thought is involved. And venom, on the other hand, is about thinking. So your mind works, your subconscious works 24 hours a day. Your prefrontal cortex, uh, your thinking part of your brain, only works when you're awake. So your brain's working at night. And if you take some of your problems and so forth at night, you can wake up with a solution because your brain is working at night. It's also when you getting good sleep is important because that's when you're transferring uh, memories from short-term memory to long-term memory on your hippocampus it occurs at night. So how do you get the ahas then? If you're focused real hard on a problem, you're not going to get an aha. Now you may get some creative idea, but you're not going to get the aha. The only way you get ahas is to get away from the problem. You take a walk, you jog, you, you, you do it when you're asleep or whatever it may be. But the point of it is, the only time you really get an ahas is when you're not really thinking about it. So some of you have seen this before, but I, I want you to answer this as quickly, not out loud, just as quickly as you can. A bat in a ball costs a dollar and ten cents. How much does a ball cost? Now, if you used your intuitive judgment, you would probably f say ten cents because it's logical that a dollar and ten cents. But of course, that's the wrong answer. The right answer is five cents. Okay, it's a dollar more, so it's the the bat's a dollar and five cents, and the ball's five cents. Point of it is, it's amazing how many people don't take the time 
to really think about a solution. They jump to a solution, and it's, many times it could be catastrophic for you. Next, we go to seeing a whole. And what do I mean by seeing the whole? It means systems thinking. You have to be really good systems thinker at the senior level. Because whenever you make a decision, it's going to have consequences throughout the system. Now, also, you want to know the system because you may know, hey, I can use this leverage point over in this point to impact something over here that I want to happen. Or if I don't pay attention, I may do something here that would be catastrophic to something over here. Take, take the uh, conflict situation in Syria. And I'm not suggesting that you read any of this. What I'm trying to show you, if I was to do something in the far left-hand corner, it could have either a positive or a negative fact, factor on the right-hand corner. That's what I'm trying to get across. So systems thinking is really important at the senior level. So when you've done all this, now it's time to get closure. You've gotten your ideas, you've, you've exercised your intuitive judgment and so forth. Now you're seeking closure, okay? This is critical thinking. This is where you challenge the facts, you challenge your assumptions. And based upon all that, what you do is you come up with hopefully a real good sense of foresight. And from that foresight, you're able to envision where you want to take the organization and make the decisions on what you need to do so that you can then formulate the strategy to get you there. So let me run through a hypothetical example. Let's say you're the CEO of Ford Motor Company right now, okay? Now, what, you have a flexible mindset, but what are you currently doing? You're building cars, selling the cars, and servicing the cars. Essentially, is what you're doing, right? Okay, let's scan the environment. What's going on? Well, first of all, look at the instability all around the world. That's going to affect factories all around the world and so forth. Political. Obviously, get rid of gas. Got to go electric. You've got trade and tariff issues that you have to deal with, right? Millennials, they're not buying cars. They're using Uber and they're using Lyft in urban communities. China's the largest market, 22 million cars sold last year, but their real emphasis is on electric cars. There's 100,000 truck driver vacancies right now, and they expect over 900,000 to be vacant in the, over the next decade. So connecting all these dots, what do you see? Well, there's going to be disruption in the auto industry. Somebody, some may lose out. Amazon has already committed to buy 100,000 electric vans from Rivian. Who are they? Republic put in an order for 2,500 garbage trucks, electric garbage trucks, from Nikola. I don't think that's going to go through now because five days ago, the CEO of Nikola got indicted for uh, fraud. Their truck that they showed in their video was actually a collage, a bunch of things, and it rolled down the hill. And they sped up the video so it looked like it was driving. So I think they're in serious trouble. General Motors says by 2035, they will be all electric. The pandemic, what's it done? Everybody's gone to remote buying, online buying. If they continue this, what's that, what, what's that going to do to the dealerships if they're buying their cars online? So let's now, okay, so here's what's going on. Let's think about what can we do? Well, let's reframe the whole issue. Why don't we, instead of selling cars to Uber and Lyft, let's do it ourselves. Let's make the cars and then run the cars, self-driving cars, in urban areas. Use your smartphone. Okay, I need a car over here. The car comes, shows up. You get in the car, drives you where you want to go. The car stays there until the next person calls it on a smartphone. You know, let's do that. 
one way of possibly of doing things in the future. Ahas, what are some potential ahas? Of course, it, I'm making this up because you wouldn't have the flash of brilliance yet. But, aha, man, if everybody's electric, everybody's going to be bored. What are they going to do if they're going cross country? Sit there and, hmm, I'm driving across country here. Maybe you invent something that you can put in, in the vehicle, uh, maybe large screen where you can have all kinds of communication with, with your organization or something, whatever. But here's a market that you might be able to. You know what? With all these truck driver things, let's build self-driving trucks, get in that business. So seeing a whole, for example, the system of driverless, uh, what's it going to take to do this? You know, do you have the electric infrastructure, for example, where are you going? What about loss of driver expertise? You know, it's one thing for us to be in the car and uh, the software takes us where we, we better not go and you can take control of the car and s stop it. But if you're grown up as a toddler up to where you never drive the car, it's all self-driving. Where's their expertise or their nuanced knowledge to handle it if something goes awry, if the software doesn't work right? So you do your analysis. First of all, are we capable of transforming ourselves to go electric while still selling cars today? And do we have the capital? And do we have the intellectual resources to actually do the work? So you challenge your assumptions and so forth and develop your foresight. And one of the assumptions is, will battery technology actually keep up? So how do you make, the, you know, you got three decisions you know, make the big bet. In other words, we're going to jump in, be a fast adapter, let somebody else start it, and then if it looks like it's going to go, we quickly get into it. Or we say we don't, we're not going to play in this game. So let's say we go all in, okay? So what's our strategy? Well, first of all, let's build some alliances. Mercedes and BMW right now have joined forces to, to help develop their digital capability. You're going to have to invest in uh, driverless technologies and electric vehicles and technologies. Maybe lobby the governments, hey, look, you want us to get into electric cars, then give us some doggone seed money to help pay for the, for the building up everything and make sure that we have roads that driverless cars can go on. By the way, what's going to happen to roads? If everything's electric, you, you pay for the maintenance of those roads through gas taxes. Well, is every road going to become a toll road? You know, what's going to happen there? Identify maybe a, a real technical company that's really good in big data and artificial intelligence and machine learning that you can use, merge with them to help, help you build the right cars.